I am way too agreeable. What steps can I take to integrate my shadow and stop being a doormat? All my life I've had so much anger, but I don't know towards what or how to get rid of it. I've been a through a few different types of therapy and it's a bit better. But it still takes me over from time to time. What advice do you have for me? I don't think that there's a better pathway to the shadow, let's say, than resentment. If you're feeling resentful about something, there's a shadow that reveals itself in two ways. One is it's a pointer to your immaturity. You need to be more disciplined. You have set goals hypothetically and if you haven't then you're under the sway of someone else or you're uh undisciplined and unintegrated and incoherent which is all shadow life in some sense you're pursuing short-term impulsive goals because you haven't thought it through you're pursuing goals that other people have established for you you're not pursuing any goals at all because you're too nihilistic to believe that life has any purpose all that's shadowy let's say um but maybe you have set goals and now you're resentful about all the work that you have to do in order to acquire those goals and maybe that manifests itself as a broad scale critique of social structure um it's that same maturity and so you can delve into that and you can find out where you're still a spoiled child and hopefully take action to rectify that or you may find that you're being compelled to do something that violates your integrity and you need to stand up for yourself and say something that you don't want to say and then you may have to learn how to incorporate your anger into your actions so that you learn how to say no when you need to say no and so that actually means that you're furthering your ethical pursuit as a consequence of integrating your shadow rather than deviating from it aggression which can be repressed sexual sexuality lust let's say which can be repressed those things are extremely useful servants when they're integrated into the whole if you're without aggression and anger and incapable of it that doesn't mean that you're on a good path and that anger knocks you off it that can happen but it's much more appropriate and sophisticated to note that the probability that you're going to pursue a higher good is magnified by your integration of all your emotional and motivational states even the ones that can cause a tremendous amount of trouble when they're left to manifest themselves in isolation you're way too agreeable well i would say you you could practice saying what you really believe that you can take a vow to tell the truth and that will make you much less agreeable uh, agreeable people are perfectly willing to sacrifice what they know to be the case to maintain short-term social harmony and it's not so much that they repress what they think it's often that they don't even allow themselves to fully realize what they think so a uh, commitment to the truth can make an agreeable person will stop an agreeable person from being a doormat i mean if you're in a relationship and a person is irritating you with something they've done you might be highly motivated not to say anything about it because you want to keep the peace you don't want to upset them you don't want the conflict that's all characteristic of characteristic of high agreeableness but once you decide to tell the truth then if you're annoyed you don't get to hide it you don't get to assume you're right you don't get to grab the person by the shirt collar and say look i'm annoyed and you're wrong you get to say I, i've i'm irritated about this situation and i need to think through that irritation to find out if i have a problem or if you have a problem but there's or if we both have a problem or if it's a different problem altogether but you can't hide the fact that the problem has made itself manifest and so if you're agreeable 
and you tell the truth about your emotional state, that will propel you out of that agreeableness by necessity. So, with regards to anger, I don't know towards what or how to get rid of it. Well, something a cognitive behavioral therapist might recommend is for a week, and maybe this is already a therapy you've been through, but this exercise is generally quite useful. First, you have to note when you're angry and admit to that. And maybe you have to practice that. So you have to decide, I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to see when I'm angry and I'm going to admit to it, at least to begin with, without judgment. I'm just going to observe it. I'm going to allow myself to observe it. Then you have to allow yourself to see what angry thoughts you have. And you can ask yourself that. What angry thoughts do I frequently have? They'll likely come to mind, maybe many of them. You can jot all those down. Those are ones you're familiar with. And then you can notice when you're angry and you can ask yourself, well, what am I thinking right at this moment? What angry thoughts am I thinking? And some of them might be quite shocking. You might also manifest themselves in destructive fantasies. You know, maybe you have a fantasy of grabbing somebody by a shirt collar and pushing them up against a wall or dumping, you know, hot coffee on your boss or some impulse towards aggression that might manifest itself as a flashing fantasy. And perhaps one that you're shocked by and don't want to admit. You don't want to admit to the existence of it, but you need to see what's happening first in your own imagination if you're going to... Also, it's also possible that a fair bit of the anger that you have is actually useful if you could just find out what it is and what it's directed toward. So the first tack is to explore the anger. What gives rise to it? What situations give rise to it? What people give rise to it? What are you doing when it happens? And what is the phenomenology of the anger? How does it make itself manifest in image fantasy and thought. And then now you have an anger inventory. Is anger in this situation warranted? What steps do I have to take in order to become less angry? And sometimes that might be an adjustment of internal, an, an internal psychological adjustment. Sometimes it might require changes in the world. Maybe you're in a relationship that's oppressive and you have been for a long time and the way to fix that isn't to adjust your attitude, although it could be, but it might be that it's time to get out of the relationship. And so, differentiation. What, when are you angry? What elicits it? Elicits it? Why are you angry? Who are you angry at? What are the nature of the angry thoughts? What are the nature of the angry fantasies? All of that. You have to get that out where you can see it. And you have to walk through it. And you can do that by yourself. You can do that while writing. You can produce counter thoughts. So if you're angry about something, you could outline the reasons why anger is not productive, or you could outline the reasons why it's productive and the reasons it's not productive for a full exploration of the issue. Then I would ask you too, if you're angry all the time is, well, are you depressed? H have you...
being evaluated clinically if, if this is a major problem? Is it a manifestation of depression because anger is an underdiagnosed symptom of depression? Um, do, do you have well thought through goals and plans and strategies, all of that? Uh, that's a more comprehensive evaluation of your entire life. Uh, and maybe you have something to say or do that you're not saying or doing. It's highly probable. Most of us have that problem. 